In today's video, I'll show you all the fun we had off the ship during our recent cruise in the Pacific Northwest. From jet boat rides, to visiting waterfalls, looking through museums, and getting a first-hand look at Washington's famous Mount St. Helens, we had a lot of fun during our various land adventures along the Columbia and Snake Rivers. This was one cruise that truly was about the places we visited more than the ship we sailed on. And by the way, we saw a lot of trains, too. This was a seven-day cruise on American Harmony, a river cruise ship that sails up and down the Columbia and Snake Rivers. I've already done a video all about the experience of sailing down the river and ship life. I'm putting a link up in the corner of the screen for anyone who hasn't already seen that video. Today's video is not about the ship or the river views. It's about all the things we did when we got off the ship in the various ports of call. Our first excursion was actually before the cruise even started. We signed up for what they call the two-night pre-cruise package in Clarkston, Washington. They put you up in the Holiday Inn for two nights before the cruise, and the day before the cruise, they take you on a very fun jet boat ride into Hell's Canyon along the Snake River. This was not just some quick little ride either. We had about five hours on the river, and I really enjoyed it. It was a comfortable enough ride for a boatload full of senior citizens, but it's a really fast ride, so that makes it a lot of fun. And when you get to the parts of the river where it's shallow and the water's moving fast, it's a good thrill. As you might expect on a five-hour excursion, we made a stop about halfway through where we had lunch and took a bathroom break, and a few people, myself included, elected to get into the river for a few minutes to cool down. One of the things I really liked was seeing the very interesting geology along this part of the river. It's mostly basalt from volcanic activity millions of years ago. And this is desert land out here in southeastern Washington. Everything you see in the surrounding landscape is very dry. Now, I've never been to the Grand Canyon, but my guess is that from down at river level, it probably looks a lot like this. Anyway, it was a really fun excursion, so I want to make a strong recommendation here that if you're going to do a cruise with American Cruise Lines here in the Pacific Northwest, be sure to book the additional two days in Clarkston so that you can take the Snake River jet boat excursion. It truly was one of the highlights of the whole trip for us. It's very convenient, too. The jet boat ride begins and ends right there at the pier where the cruise ships dock, just below the Holiday Inn in Clarkston. On day two of our cruise, we came into the Tri-Cities of Richland, Kennewick, and Pasco, the most populous metro region on the east side of Washington. The ship docks in Richland, and I live just across the river in Pasco, about a mile from where you see the ship here. But I've only lived here in the Tri-Cities for about a year now, and there are two points of interest that I just haven't made it to in my first year in the Tri-Cities, and it just so happens that American Cruise Lines offers excursions to both of them. So I took an excursion to one in the morning and one in the afternoon. In the morning, I visited the Reach Museum, which is basically a visitor center for the Hanford Reach National Monument, a large federally protected area of land just north of the Tri-Cities. The museum has exhibits that explain the geology of the area and lots about the wildlife native to the area and the fish that run in the river. But the most interesting part of the Reach Museum tells the story of what is known as the Hanford Site. During World War II, the Hanford Site was a top secret part of the Manhattan Project, the effort to develop nuclear weapons that ultimately ended the war. At the Hanford Site, just north of Richland, and just a few miles from where I live now, is what's known as the B Reactor, the place where plutonium was manufactured for the world's first plutonium bomb. That first bomb was exploded in the Nevada desert as a test to prove to everyone that the concept actually worked. The second nuclear bomb that was made from Hanford plutonium was the one that was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan 
which caused the Japanese to surrender a few days later, ending World War II. The production of plutonium at Hanford was a top secret. There were tens of thousands of workers brought into Richland to build the facilities at Hanford, but they had no idea what they were actually working on. It was all a big secret, except of course to the nuclear scientists and the military brass. So the day the atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, the secret was out and the next day, the headline on the local paper explained what everybody at Hanford had been working on. Yep, it was atomic bombs. There's a lot more to the story than I have time for in this video. Look up the Hanford site on Wikipedia or look up the B Reactor on YouTube if you want to find out more. After lunch on board American Harmony, I got on the bus again for my afternoon excursion, Sacagawea State Park, which is located right where the Snake River flows into the Columbia River. The Lewis and Clark expedition camped right here on this site in 1805, and because of its prominent location at the confluence of two mighty rivers, this has been an important location for trading, fishing, transportation, and shipping for the last couple of hundred years. As a kind of a throwback to those days, paddle wheel riverboats still sometimes dock right here. There's a museum with lots of information about the history of this place, and throughout the park, you'll find plaques that tell the story of Lewis and Clark. And I liked the visual of being able to see how the Native Americans turned a tree into a canoe. When we first arrived at the park, something funny happened, and it speaks a lot to the kind of employees American Cruise Lines has working for them. The sprinklers were running at the park when we arrived, and they were shooting right across the cement path that runs from the parking lot to the museum. The passengers got all blocked up here because nobody wanted to get wet, so one of the cruise line employees disabled the sprinkler himself, allowing everyone to safely proceed, and we all had a good laugh over it. American Harmony stays in Richland until 6 p.m., so after getting back to the ship from my other excursions, I still had plenty of time to do one other thing in Richland. Because I live in the area, I happen to know that there's an excellent ice cream shop within easy walking distance of where the ship docks. You just walk up the street one block and you'll find Amethyst Creamery. This is a place all Richland cruise ship passengers should visit. They have fantastic ice cream. A couple of days later and further on down the river, the ship docked in Stevenson, Washington. And we had a very memorable day here. It started with an excursion that took us to a very beautiful waterfall, Multnomah Falls. Enjoy a few moments of these gorgeous views.
One thing I found interesting about Multnomah Falls is how little water actually flows over the falls. It turns out it doesn't take much water to make a beautiful waterfall if nature just spreads it out a little and drops it a very long way. This is the little stream below Multnomah Falls. That amount of water right there is all that flows over the falls. Hard to believe, but it's true. After our morning excursion to Multnomah Falls, we had some time to just walk around the town of Stevenson. I'm a train fanatic, so I was just happy as could be when this happened. BNSF has a very busy rail line that runs along this side of the Columbia River and right through Stevenson. I had fun watching the trains that afternoon, and I even managed to get some pretty good video of one of the trains from my drone. still got a lot of things to show you when we come back right after this. Our next stop was in Kalama, Washington, a great example of how this particular type of river cruise ship doesn't need a dock. They intentionally ran the ship aground at a beach along the river, extended a gangway out the front of the ship, and most of the passengers got on buses that were waiting there to take us to a very famous destination, Mount St. Helens, the site of a huge volcanic eruption in 1980, the deadliest and most economically destructive volcanic event in the history of the United States. 57 people were killed, 200 homes, 47 bridges, 185 miles of highway and 15 miles of railway were destroyed. 
The Forest Service has a really nice place to view Mount St. Helens called the Johnston Ridge Observatory, named after David Johnston, a volcanologist that was killed by the 1980 eruption. Now, the visitor center itself was closed due to the pandemic, but a place like this is not about going into a visitor center. It's about sitting out on the viewing area and taking in those beautiful views of Mount St. Helens. And by the way, the restrooms at the visitor center were open, and at the outdoor amphitheater that overlooks the mountain, a park ranger gave a very nice talk about Mount St. Helens. The next day, our ship was docked in Astoria, Washington, the furthest down the Columbia River we would go on this cruise. If you went any further down the river, you'd be in the Pacific Ocean. We didn't take a bus tour while we were in Astoria because right next to where the cruise ship docks, there's a very nice maritime museum, which I enjoyed exploring at my own pace. American Cruise Lines prepays the entrance fee for all of their passengers. That was a nice touch. The museum tells the story of the very dangerous place known as the Columbia Bar. That's where the full force of the Columbia River meets the full force of the Pacific Ocean. There are all sorts of interesting exhibits in the museum about ships, boats, the Coast Guard, and all things related to shipping on the Columbia River. There were also a couple of exhibits I didn't expect to find in a maritime museum a green screen video demonstration where kids could see for themselves that a TV weather person's job is harder than it looks. And there was also an exhibit that simulated the winds you'd experience in a hurricane. Outside of the museum and right next to where our cruise ship was docked, there was a Coast Guard cutter standing by to launch if needed for any kind of mission it might be needed on, search and rescue, law enforcement, drug interdiction. And there was also an old retired Coast Guard light ship, the Columbia. Cruise ship passengers got to walk through the light ship with no charge. They used to put light ships like this out in waters that were unsuitable for building a lighthouse. Imagine being stationed on a ship like this during a storm with 70 knot winds and 30 foot waves. This ship served during the 1950s through the 1970s. I have a friend, Wayne McMorrin, that used to serve on one of these old light ships back in the day. Touring this one really helped me visualize what Wayne had to go through during his service. As we watched some time-lapse video of our ship, American Harmony, going through the locks at the dam in the Dalles, that's a town on the Oregon side of the Columbia River, about halfway between the Pacific coastline and where we live in the Tri-Cities, I want to just mention that I really enjoy reading the comments that people leave here on YouTube about my videos. So if you've been watching this video for this long, do me a favor, take the time to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about this video and what parts of this Columbia River cruise looked interesting to you. I read all the comments that people leave on my videos. It's your direct line to tell me what you think. And if you're interested in booking any kind of cruise on any cruise line, or even a land-based vacation like an all-inclusive resort, I've put the contact information for my travel agent in the description section of this video. Feel free to contact her for help in booking your next vacation. This video is rapidly winding to a close as our ship makes its way out of the locks at the dam in the Dalles. I do still have a couple more videos to come from this cruise. In the coming weeks, there will be a video that gives you a full ship tour, including some of the cabins. And there's also going to be a video for my train fanatics, featuring all the great train videos I've shot along the Columbia River. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching.